is minus 2. Yep. Uh, we're going to have uh, 1 plus 3. And most important, Fz. Um, the bells will be gone, so we're just going to get 1. Dr. Lambert, yes. it's different in the notes, what you have for it, Fy. Um, yes, I, uh, while I was running, I spotted a mistake. Um, yes, there is a mistake. Um, all right, so where do you go, Kanoya? Um, <coughs> just to confirm here, respect to Y, that doesn't contribute to anything. We have um, Z is being, Z squared is being treated as a constant, so it should just be Z squared. And then X and Z are constants, so we get minus 2XZ. So yeah, what's on the board is right, what's in the notes is wrong. <coughs> but with respect to Z is non-zero um, at this point, then the implicit function term is satisfied. So Z is a function of X and Y near this point, and uh, Zx is minus Fx over Fz. 2zy is minus Fy over Fz is uh, minus 3. So those are ways to change at that point. So, so no matter, so you can have any number of independent variables um, and then one dependent variable, which would be z in this case, this is how you get all the partial derivatives of the dependent variable with respect to any of the independent uh, variables. Okay. A little more generally, you have f of x1, x2, xn, y is equal to zero. So here we have a function of n plus one variables. Um, and Fy is non-zero, and all of these partial derivatives continuous, then partial of Y with respect to any of the x's is minus partial of F with respect to that x over partial of F with respect to Y. So that's the more general form for any number of uh, independent variables. So anytime you're writing a function with whatever in like different like f of x. So I should mention that um, in the remainder of the lecture six <clears throat> notes, I go a little more general than that, where suppose you have n independent variables like we have over there, and m depend dependent variables. So several dependent variables this time and you want to define those in terms of the independent ones. Um, so I go ahead and do that case in the notes. It gets a little nasty um, because you end up, instead of requiring one partial derivative to be non-zero, you have several dependent variables. So you have a matrix of partial derivatives whose determinant must be non-zero. So all of that is worked out in the notes, but I'd like to, I'd really like to cover it, but one, we're behind. Two, it requires more linear algebra than I'd like to introduce here. Um, and three, it's not on the test. So. All right. What's the notation? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so work out a case where you have two dependent variables and two independent ones how you go about doing that. So, <clears throat> we talked about differentiability, where the, the idea behind differentiability is there should be a well-defined rate of change as your independent variables change along any direction, not just with respect to x or y or z, or not with, not with respect to just one variable. So when you have functions several variables, that's quite important is to know how a function changes in any direction. So that's what we're going to take a look at now. So we're going to look at function 
f that takes n variables in, only one variable out. Now I defined this before. The gradient of f It's written this way, upside down delta f. It's a vector of all of the first partial derivatives. So in this case, it would have n components. All right. So the gradient of f at any particular point is just a vector of partial derivatives um, at that point. This covers rate of change with respect to any of the variables. Now, how are we going to use this to be able to figure out how a function changes as x and y, or however many variables you have, change in other ways? For instance, um, if you're looking at a function of two variables, fx tells you rate of change along this direction. Fy gives you rate of change in this direction. What if x and y change together and go off in that direction? How's the function changing then? Is it changing at all? Maybe it's changing the fastest in that direction. These are things we, that are important to know. So uh, for that, we define a more general kind of derivative that takes into account that your independent variables can change in any direction they want. I'll define this in the case of uh, two variables. So we have a function of two variables, and then we have a particular point. The directional derivative of f at this point in the direction of a vector u, which will have these components, a and b, and very important, the length of this vector has to be 1. It must be a unit vector. So in other words, a squared plus b squared must be equal to 1. So the rate change of a function at this point, as x and y change along this direction, is given by this limit, which is similar to how you define how we define the partial derivatives. So we take f of x naught plus a h, say is the x component, y naught plus b h minus f of x naught y naught all over h. So normally with partial derivatives, we only change one of the variables and see how a function changes. But now we have a certain amount of change um, for all variables. So if we, if, if we have x and y changing along this direction, say if this is a 45 degree angle, then in this case, u would be the vector 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. Uh, so we want the partial derivative, or the directional derivative in that direction. Okay. So, so this is defined in a similar way as a regular derivative, but how is that going to help us actually compute it? This, I mean, we don't want to be evaluating the limits. We don't, we don't do that for partial derivatives. We just apply the differentiation rules. So it would be nice if we could um, if we could build on this definition to come up with a practical way of computing this. And this is where the gradient is going to help us. Now, first some notation. So this is written this way, uppercase D. You put the function as a subscript. No, no you don't. <laughs> and I did this how many thousands of times in the notes? The vector, u, is a subscript. And then your function, and here, if we, here it's evaluated at the point, so then we specify the point. All right, so that's the way it's uh, written. So, um, so the way we can compute this uh, 